Greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name given among men, whereby we must be saved. And we do appreciate each and every one of you who has taken your time to tune into in this program. And we believe it will be a real blessing to you at the end of the broadcast. We'll give you an address and a telephone number and also the website. So Yahweh's grace and mercy, we're fixing to be going over to the book of Acts, the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. But there's a verse I want to read right here real quick in the book of Matthew 26 and verse 13. It says that, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done be told or be told for a memorial of her. And of course we understand that this is the lady that washed the Mashiach's feet. And when the, the Messiah talked about the gospel that would be preached in the whole world would be the only true gospel that was taught by the Mashiach, prophesied by the prophets, and after the Messiah was taken out of here, it was given to the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And we do appreciate each and every one of you that's been studying along with us here. And we hope that you'll continue. We hope that you can follow along with us on this in your Bibles. And as we say every week, we're reading from a red letter edition King James Bible. And also, if this is the first time you've tuned in this program, when we come to where you would find in your King James Bible the name of Jesus, we put the original Hebrew name of the Creator of heaven and earth back like it's supposed to be. In other words, if the name of Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, was not in the original 1611 King James Bible, then the apostles, prophets, vengeance, pastors, and teachers, and none of the prophets in the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, ever used it then. Of course, when you start backtracking it, the name of Jesus, which is spelled J-E-S-U-S, goes back to actually a Greek-Latin name known as I-S-U-S, Jesus, and goes back to the Greek form, Jesus, I-E-S-O-U-S. So, once you begin to study this and search this out, search for it for yourself. Find out whether it be so or not. And you'll probably, if you'll study with an open mind, you'll be shocked. I said you'll be shocked. Now, the verse that I'm facing go to the book of Acts the 10th chapter, 1043 of the book of Acts. Matter of fact, if you do any studying on this and you understand that when the book of Acts itself 
was written. And you, you search this out for yourself. The book of Acts was written roughly between 61 to 64 A.D. Some will say it was completed between 61 and maybe 66, 67 A.D. You will find that some will say that Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter were martyred somewhere or close to 70 A.D. One way or the other, give or take. So we understand then that the book of Acts itself would had had been completed. In the book of Acts 10.43, the book of Acts, we are understanding then that the book of Acts, if it was not written till then, everything that the book of Acts is talking about had to have a foundation. With every epistle that you study, when I'm talking about epistles now, I'm talking about the writing of the New Testament from the book of Romans to the book of Revelation. That were written in the time of what we know as the New Testament. It had to have a foundation. When you read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And study them. We understand that the book of Matthew was written between, some will say between 40 A.D., some will say between 60 and 65 A.D. The book of Mark, some will say that it was written roughly between 45 A.D., or from 57 to 63 A.D., give or take. The book of Luke, they would say, was written between 57 to 64 A.D. The book of John, the book of St. John, which was written, which had written John, St. John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelations, was all written roughly between 90 to 98 A.D., give or take. So, the four Gospels, what's known as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts, and all of the epistles from the book of Romans to Jude. Now, I don't know that you could put the Revelation book of Revelation as an epistle. So let's just say from the book of Romans to the book of Jude as the epistles. And even also the book of Revelations again was written, they say, between 90 to 98 A.D., give or take. But we understand that when the assembly was established on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of the true Mashiach, Pentecost in Hebrew known as Shavuot, once we can understand this, we can understand that the writing of the New Testament what we call the New Testament today was based on Scripture from Genesis to Malachi. So, here in the book of Acts 10.43, 
we had started to read this last week. Then, of course, we got into something else in another verse. But here in the book of Acts 10.43, it says, To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. If we understand the book of Acts and at the time of the book of Acts in the 10th chapter there was a man that was known as Cornelius a centurion Well, y'all will begin to deal with him. The Bible said he was a devout man, one that feared God. This is how the King James says. And he gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Now, first of all, the God that he was praying to was the God of Israel. He was the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and if we go back and begin to study this and search this out we find that Apostle Peter that when Apostle Peter was praying in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts we find that Apostle Peter right before it was pretty much said like this before he was eaten or he went to eat we find that Apostle Peter begin to study or pray at a certain time. And we also find that y'all will give him a vision. And in this vision... Yahweh was showing him that he would minister to the Gentiles. I said that he would minister to the Gentiles. Matter of fact, I said the ninth chapter. It was really in the tenth chapter. where a vision had come before him. And Yahweh was getting Apostle Peter ready to preach the same gospel that he had preached on the day of Pentecost In the book of Acts, he's fixing to preach this to the Gentiles. So we find that in the 10th chapter, 1043, after he had visited Cornelius' house, And how they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to read 1043 again. It says to him. This is Apostle Peter doing the talking. I said this is Apostle Peter doing the talking. 
He says, to him gave all the prophets. It's a Hebrew word known as kol hanevaim me'edim. The word kol is all. The word hanevaim is the word for prophets. And the word me'edim is a Hebrew word for witness. The prophets here that he's talking about was the prophets in what you would call the Old Testament. And it says that all the prophets, in other words, to him gave all the prophets witness that through his name now, what name is this talking about? Now, if I understand this right, I said, if I understand this right, and you get to searching this out, you find that the man that is saying this was Apostle Peter. And when he had give witness to this, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell on them which heard the word. Remember, this is the Gentiles that were desiring to know more about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This was not the Goyim, the Gentiles, the pagans' God, but this was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the God that all the prophets gave witness to. Not some of them, but all of them. All the prophets gave witness to him. These are the same Gentiles that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They heard the word. These Gentiles received the same plan of salvation that was given to Israel. Israel on the day of Pentecost by the same man known as Apostle Peter. Matter of fact, if you go to Acts 10.43, or excuse me, 10.42, it says this. This is Apostle Peter talking here. It says, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and the dead. Matter of fact, the Hebrew word here for quick is a Hebrew word called hakayim, which means life come from a root word called kaya, or, or kai, excuse me. The way things are being taught today, people will say, preachers will say, that we're Gentiles, we don't speak Hebrew, and then they try to justify this by coming up with a name that's less than 250 years old, which is the name of Jesus. I've even had preachers tell me. I asked them, I said, what name do you believe that Apostle Peter preached in, or preached in, baptized in? They said, Jesus. Now, 
you know, I really sometimes don't know that I really want to just believe some of this stuff the way people are saying. There's a, let me say this. Let me read you something about a Jewish proverb. This is an honest, an honest but a mistaken man once shown the truth either ceases to be mistaken or ceases to be honest. When you're presented the truth, if it comes against everything that you've ever been taught, you better stay with the truth. When you look at this, 1043, Apostle Peter gave the plan of salvation only in one name. How do I know? We read some of this last week, I believe it was. Go over to, matter of fact, go over to the second chapter, if you're already in the book of Acts, go to the 16th verse, the second chapter of the book of Acts, the 16th verse. Now, if we really begin to look at this and search this out and study it and be honest about this, here in the book of Acts, Apostle Peter again, the same man who had the keys to the kingdom according to the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew. What keys did he have? Where did he get his foundation? What did Apostle Peter preach on through what and how? If he did not have no writing of a written New Testament 50 days after the resurrection of the true Mashiach, the book of Acts tells you oneness people wants to jump over to the book of Acts 238. What is the foundation of Acts 2.38. If the name of Jesus is less than 250 years old, and if it was around at that time, why did they not use it in the 1611, the original 1611 King James Bible? That would be a testimony even more against it. This is what Apostle Peter did on the day of Pentecost. Now he's going back here. He's fixed, he says, 2.16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now he's the same one in Acts 10.43 that said, to him gave all the prophets witness. Joel happened to be one of the prophets known as Joel. Hadnavi, in Hebrew, known as Joel the prophet. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. Apostle Peter talks about, in the 17th verse, he says, and it should come to pass in the last days, saith The King James says, Seth, uh, God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's the word known as kol basar. Means all flesh. Whether they're from Israel or just from other nations. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on and the eighteenth verse says, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. His servants and his handmaidens. And I will shew wonder, wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And the sun, in the 20th verse, says, And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and noble day of the King James says, Lord, come. Hebrew, it is uses the word Yahweh. Because actually, he is quoting this from the book of Joel. In Acts 2.21, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord... The King James says, shall be saved. Here, in the book of Joel, if you'll study this, in the book of Joel, you will find in Joel 2.32, where this is quoted from, the name it's talking about here uses the name of Yahweh in Hebrew. But it's covered up in the English form of the King James Bible with the word L-O-R-D capital letters. Apostle Peter, the man with the keys to the kingdom, gives the plan of salvation and he had to go back to the prophets to do it. I said he had to go back to the prophets and do it. This message first belonged to Israel. Then the Gentiles would get it. The book of Luke teaches you this. They're going to get a, the same message. Not a different plan of salvation, but the same message. I said the same message. Not a different plan of salvation. The same name that all the prophets gave witness to. Looks like that our time has once again come and gone. We'll pick this back up next week. Y'all was grace and mercy. We have a CD called The Father's Name and Literature that we send out along with it. You can write Brother Jerry, 775 MacDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014 USA. That's Brother Jerry, 775 MacDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014 USA. The telephone number is 770-784-0703. That's 770-784-0703. We have a website. You can go to the web, website. It's called Yahweh Ministries. But if you'll spell Yahweh, you've got to spell Yahweh. Y-A-H-W-A-H. That's Y-A-H-W-A-H. Put a hyphen, then ministries.org, and it should shoot you just about straight over there. Go, in, go into the website, and you'll see quite a few videos and other websites that are connected with it. It does look like our time has come and gone. Telephone number, once again, is 770-784-0703. The address, once again, is Brother Jerry, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014 USA. Telephone number is 770-784-0703. Looks like our time has come and gone. We come on at this same time every week. The time that you're listening to us is the same time we come on every week, so till the next broadcast, we appreciate you, we love you, Shalom.